Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back. Um, just to recap on what we did uh, uh, last round, we did a Windows form uh, to display recipes and to show the uh, various items in the recipe uh, via the set of labels. So, just a recap here. So, when we click on the list all recipes, the recipes appear here, and when I select an item inside the list box the labels here are updated with the appropriate data all right so what we're going to do today is to create a a web uh, application uh, using a, a web form that will more or less behave uh, in exactly the same way all right so okay so first off you you create a, a new project so so make sure it's a visual basic here yeah visual basic all right and asp.net web application right uh, so give it a name as per usual. So I'm gonna call mine web app. Uh, let me see web app db. Yeah, okay. What can I call it? Web app db. All right, web app db recipe. I think I'll call it. All right. Okay. So make sure it's selected to empty, and then you choose web forms uh, down here. I click OK. All right, so uh, so okay, so you will get this uh, blank template. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to add the database that I the same database that I use for the recipe. So the the only difference here is instead of clicking instead of right clicking on on the project name, you right click on app data. So you right click on app data, uh, you select add, and then you say existing item. All right, and then you choose the uh, location of of your database. So mine, uh, I'm not sure where I think it's over here. Yeah, so this is my my database. All right, so as you can see there, it's inside now. Um, you can open it and and browse through what's inside of it. Uh, so, but I'm not I'm not gonna just gonna continue creating my form. So the very first form you create uh, is by clicking on right clicking on the the project name, add, and then web forms. Okay, I'm going out of the <laughs> out of the window a little bit here. Uh, so it's called web form. Just click just select web form all right give it a name now the very first form well at least one of the very first forms that one of the forms that you have to create must be called default uh, because it will be the first form that will appear when you run it inside a browser yeah so remember yeah a windows form sorry a web form is an app that runs inside a browser so this is what you'll get it looks different from before so what you see here is a bunch of HTML codes uh, and you can actually type directly here. Uh, so, for example, before I type anything, if I were to show the design side, if I click on the design um, tab at the bottom here, I'll see more or less a blank thing. And if I were to run it, now mine here has been set up to use Google Chrome to display. So, if you run it, you'll just get a blank um, page. All right. So, I'm I, and I I can enter data either here in the source. So, for example, if I say hello. Uh, in between the two divs. So if I switch back to design, I'll see the word hello there. Or uh, I press enter here and I type world. So I go back to source and I'll see the hello break line. This is the break. Uh, it will throw the next line to the following line. Yeah, so world ends up at the bottom. So here we go. That's how it looks like. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to more or less replicate the interface that I created uh, here right but inside the web form so just go back to the toolbox uh, it's as per usual I'm just pinned this so that I can uh, see it side by side uh, so first thing I want to do is I want to put a list box uh, list box list box here yeah, list box right and drop it so I get a list box now the thing about a list box in a in a web form is that the if there's no data in it when you preview uh, the page 
the list box ends up with zero width. All right. So first thing I want to do here, whenever I put a list box, is I want to go down to you know you select it, you go down to properties, look look for width. I'm going to set mine to a minimum of 200 pixels. 200 pixels. All right. Uh, next, I'll put a button. Or I'll put a button. Uh, button, button. Right. Okay. I'm going to put a button next to it. All right. And then I'm going to put a list of uh, labels. So I'm going to put it below the list box. I just press enter there at, at the end of the button. Uh, so there'll be like one, two, three. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five labels. So let me do that. So there will be five labels. So look for labels. There's one. All right. And as usual, by the way, you need to name them appropriately. So I'll do that naming in a bit. So I'm going to put my five labels. All right, so I have my five labels. Now, now, now I'm going to name everything appropriately. So I'm going to first name the list box. So the list box is going to call be called, uh, let me see if I can get the old name, uh, recipe list box. So, all right, so recipe list box. And this one is going to be um, a button called uh, list all button. That's the button here, list all button. List all button. All right, and then the text on it should show list all recipes. So, list, oh, sorry. Go back to this. Oh, there. List all recipes. All right, list all recipes. Uh, now the labels. So the first one is going to be the ID label. ID label. The next one is going to be the name label. The next one is going to be category label. Oh, sorry. Cat category. Next one is going to be energy label, and finally the last one is going to be called cooking time label. All right, all right. So now I have all the labels. All right, all right. So as per the uh, Windows form, uh, we had to open a connection to the database during form load event you know form load event but for a before a uh, web form uh, because there isn't such a thing as a form in the in a browser uh, so the event that we're looking for is the page load event all right so I'm gonna go over to I'm just gonna press um, F7 all right to get to the code part so if you if you can see straight away there's already there's already a page load event here. Just we're gonna add some stuff. So let me first, uh, just like any database uh, application, I have to import the correct uh, package or library uh, dot data dot SQL client. All right. All right. So I, okay, here are the codes here. I'm just gonna copy paste from my uh, earlier code of the windows form uh so you can get yeah, you you saw the code earlier all right and then instead of uh instead of form load i'm going to put my database opening in the page load event but ultimately the code is going to be identical uh now remember that i had put my nutrition.mdf inside the app data uh folder once you do that you can actually keep everything to be exactly the same as our Windows form. Uh, yeah, so yeah, exactly the same. I'm not changing anything. I'm just copy pasting from the previous project. All right. Now the other thing is I want to be able to just like in the Windows form, 
I'd like to be able to close the connection. So to close the connection, I will put it inside the unload event. Right, so how do I get to that? Well, I'm inside the the form class. Yeah, this is the form. Uh, sorry, the the uh, page class. Okay, remember, yeah, in uh, in web form, it's not called a form. It's called a page. Yeah, as you can see here. All right, page. All right. So it's inheriting from a another class called page. All right. So in this page class, there's an event. You click key on the right. A an, an unload event. All right. So unload event is uh, when the uh, when the web app closes. All right. So, and I want to put the same code as I did for the Windows form earlier. All right. Okay. So that's done. That's in terms of uh, closing. All right. The next thing I want to do is, of course, to react on the uh, the list all button uh, button. So this, that means this button here. So if I uh, click on this, then it should list out all the all the recipes names uh, and I believe energy uh, here. So I double click on this. All right. So there it creates a list all button click event. All right. This is um, hopefully you guys notice that it's exactly the same as if you're running a, a Windows app. All right. So again, I'm going to copy paste the code that I had earlier. For Windows form, all right. So there, this is the SQL command. Yeah. So select name energy from recipe order by name. Okay. Uh, all right. So I, I I'm not changing anything here except a few things. Okay. Number one, uh, you should not use message box. Uh, I I there's there's a lot of weird issues with using message box. So so what do I do? So what's the alternative? So what I'm going to do is I'm going back to the to the to the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a label to the right of the button, which would be normally invisible. All right, it'll be another label. I'm going to call it the error label. So the idea is if let me go back to the code. Uh, the idea is if if dt dot rows dot count is equal to zero, meaning that there are no recipes in the table, then this message, which initially would appear in a message box in the Windows form, would appear as a label to the right of this. So, so I'm gonna add a label. I'm gonna call this the um, the error label. All right, the error label. Uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna make it bold and turn it into and turn it red. All right. Uh, let me see font. I'll make it bold. All right. And the four color, four color means the foreground color. I'm going to turn it red. All right, so you can see the preview there; it's already red. But the thing is, here down here is a visibility. Right now, it sets to true. I'm going to set it to false. All right. Okay. So now that's the error label. Uh, okay. So let me go back to my code. So the idea is instead of message box. I'll say the error label. All right. I'll just I'll just make it visible. Yeah, error label dot visible. It's still true. So the message on the label will be this: no recipes found. All right. Sorry, I don't need the quotes here. So no recipes found. The rest I'm I'm not interested. All right. So going back to the design page, click on the label, yeah, and then go down to text here, paste it, enter there, no recipes found. So, uh, so because it's uh, set to set visible to false, so you won't appear when you first run the app. All right, uh, but when it if you click on this button and goes into this list all button click event, if there are if there's nothing there, then it will show the label. It will make it visible. Which means that otherwise, if there are data here, then uh, you should make it. You should make that label uh, invisible. So visible set to false. All right. All right. So the same thing. You still uh, if that means if there if there's data, that means dt dot rows dot count. If it's larger than zero, then you get to this. This, this becomes uh, false. Then it comes to the else. So it clear the error label. 
you'll clear the uh, list box uh, and then I'm going I'm using the for each loop to populate the recipe list box so notice that I've not changed anything here the only thing I've changed is, is uh, the fact that uh, I'm using this method that means using a, a, a label to show errors instead of using message box remember don't use message box or input box in your uh, web app you have to find alternative voice if you want to do a pop-up uh, that's probably for another video all right okay so now uh, so I've done the, the button part so let, let's just run this to make sure that it works okay so what's gonna do is gonna uh, open up Chrome in my case it'll open up Chrome uh, if everything is all right okay I need to make my Chrome a lot smaller hang on all right so now I have the app running inside a browser let's make it a little bit smaller all right all right so that's my my app running so if I click list all recipes I get all the data right so just like before uh, so this just to put as a side by side here yeah list recipes will, will show everything right list click list recipes again okay so the next thing I want to do is to replicate this behavior meaning that when I click on when I click on an item the list of labels will change okay so that's what we're going to do next.